Hello, just here at the meet and greet, the Democratic Party, here at Boulevard Grill. I'm just covering this for my website. A lot of people I just saw at the rally, at the pro-choice rally, were here today. Nice little cutout of John Fetterman in the back. I'll see if I can get some interviews. Okay. I'm just getting the lay of the room, a nice turnout today. Met one of the judge candidates. And, uh, well, okay, uh, lots of stuff going on here. I'll, hopefully I'll get some good interviews. Go back to the mic. Please. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm gonna say the same thing I said when I was substitute teaching. If my lips are moving, yours shouldn't be. And it's hard to hear in here, I understand. That's just a joke, guys, all right? So once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. We're actually gonna start off with our statewide judge candidates today because it's statewide races and they have other places to go. So uh, just very quickly though, why our statewide judges are so important. We have a split on the Superior Court. We have a split on the Supreme Court and we are under on the Commonwealth Court. And maybe uh, Stacy can tell us why are judges so, why is it so important? What was just decided? Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade got flipped on Dobbs. It now goes down to the states. Some people in here are pro-life and that is fine. Some people in here are pro-choice and that is fine. But as a woman who works for a child advocacy center, politicians should not be making our decisions. Okay? I don't hear anyone saying that about a man's decision to make to get Viagra or have a heart valve replacement. So these are very, very important elections. Okay? So um, I'm going to start with kind of go down on the races. So we're going to start with Joe is running for Superior Superior Court. So this is Joe Beck. Um, she's running for Superior Court. We'll turn it over. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Um, my name is Jill Beck. I am from Allegheny County, and as Nina said, I'm running for statewide superior court. Uh, our court system can be a little confusing, so I like to start with a little civics lesson, if that's okay. Uh, the superior court is an appellate court when somebody goes to trial in a civil, criminal, family, juvenile, or orphans court case that whoever loses that case has the automatic right to appeal from whatever county they're in up to the Superior Court. And the Superior Court hears cases typically in three judge or nine judge panels to make the decision as to whether there was an error made below or whether the case can stand. These are important cases. These are deciding somebody's right to freedom, their right to parent their children, their right to their inheritance, their right to their health, their wealth, their safety, their home, their job, their contract. Um, I have practiced in all of these areas as, a, as an attorney. I have also practiced in the Superior Court itself, filing appeals, defending appeals, and orally arguing before that court and appellate courts across the country. And I spent 10 years on the other side of the bench working for Christine Donahue as one of her law clerks, where I drafted over 500 decisions of the kind that I will get to decide if elected to that court. So I know the law. I know the court. I know how the sausage is made, as they say but I also know the human aspect of these cases. I have dedicated my career to representing vulnerable and underserved members of our population. Child abuse victims, domestic violence victims, victims of racial discrimination, victims of violence caused by illegal gun sales, victims of wage theft, members of the LGBTQ community, veterans. I've helped people in criminal and civil matters get the same rights and protections as people who have money because really what it comes down to is every person, no matter who they are, what they look like, how they pray, who they love, how much money they make, is entitled to the same equal and equitable treatment in the courts. And that's what I firmly believe. And I know that every case that comes before that court is the most important case in the life of the litigants involved. And if I'm elected to that court, I will give absolutely every case the time, effort, and energy it deserves. 
because I know these people. I've helped these people. I've held their hands. They've cried on my shoulder. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that justice is served and that it truly is for all. I have been highly recommended by the Allegheny County Bar Association to be a Superior Court judge. This year, there are two seats available. And as Nina mentioned, right now, there is one judge missing from the Superior Court. She retired early. She was a Republican. And there is another judge retiring at the end of next year. He is also a Republican. Currently, it's a 7-7 split, Democrats and Republicans. So obviously, winning these two seats would give a Democratic edge to the court. But I will say, the Superior Court is really not a political court. It's certainly the least political of any of the courts that we have at the appellate level. And you don't want a Democratic judge or Republican judge. You want a fair judge, someone who's just going to do the work, be honest and ethical, and put in the time, effort, and energy that the cases deserve. And that's what I promise to you. Uh, now, some of you probably recognize me or know me from having run in 2021. I was honored when I ran for the Superior Court to have the backing of the Cambria County Democrats. You guys endorsed me, and it was truly something that I appreciated and felt very proud of. I would love to have your backing and support again. The support of smaller counties cannot be overemphasized by me. Pennsylvania is 67 counties. It is not just Allegheny and Philadelphia. We need you to get us over the hump in November because anyone who thinks they can win a statewide election on Democratic votes alone is selling you something. It's not possible. And I would venture to guess that folks like you who live in we'll say pink to red counties, might know a Republican or an independent voter who might be in your family, your coworker, your neighborhood. And they might even be moderate enough to think about voting for a Democratic judge. And you might be able to introduce me to those folks so that I could get the word out and then we could keep and make sure that our courts are fair and equal for everyone involved. Um, I think one of my one of my proudest moments of the last election, although I lost, was the fact that I won 54 counties, including Cambria. It was really, for me, a huge boom. And you know, nobody likes to lose, but I got nearly 40% of the vote. And at that time, there was only one seat available and three candidates running. This time, there are two seats available, and I'm only asking for one. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'm being, I think I'm being very reasonable here. Um, but I truly, I would love to have your support again. I appreciate your support in the past. I'll be here, so look forward to talk, talking to all of you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. Um, Joe. First of all, the two running for Supreme Court are Deb Kunselman and Patrick Doherty. No, Dr. Yeah, Dan. Dan Cafferty. Oh my God, I just talked to him last week for like 20 minutes. Um, sorry, it's been a very, very rough week. Um, so on Superior Court, we do have three candidates. Joe is one. Tamika Lane, she was supposed to be here. She called me this morning and made her apologies. She could not make it. And Patrick Dugan had an emergency, but his campaign manager, Laura Shale, is going to speak on his behalf. All right, hello, Cambria County. This is an amazing crowd. Um, I'm so happy to see you. Um, and I want to thank, uh, let's give a round of applause for your chair really quick. Um, this is a fantastic chair. Really speaks to the energy that we need going into 2023 with these high stakes judicial races coming up. Uh, so again, my name is Laura Shadel. I am here uh, speaking on behalf of Judge Pat Dugan, who is running for one of the Superior Court seats. Uh, so just a little bit about Pat. Um, he was born and raised in a working class uh, Irish family in Philadelphia. Uh, when he came of age, he enlisted in the United States Army to broaden his perspective and horizons. Um, as he came of eight, or um, after that, he uh, used his GI Bill to then earn a law degree um, where he sought out really tough cases as an attorney uh, to find people who were most in need and fight for them within the judicial or within the criminal justice system. Um, 
So, you know, um, what happened when he um, then became a judge in Philadelphia and then was elected to become the president judge, which he currently serves as the, um, yes, yeah, the president judge of the Philadelphia Municipal Court. Um, and during that time, he also founded the Philadelphia Veterans Court, which has become the model not only in the Commonwealth, but the nation for these kinds of courts, um, which really has a focus on rehabilitation um, and kind of trauma-informed experiences uh, to make sure that instead of just throwing the book at people who are struggling, um, that we give them a second chance. Um, and it's really been effective. This is something, a lot of work that he has done through his leadership on the courts. They have actually reduced recidivism rates to under 10%. And this is in Philadelphia. Um, so this is a really great achievement. And it's these experiences, these life experiences and his work as a judge um, that we want to take now to the Superior Court because that's understanding what this court is all about. It's about this uh, the intersection of humanity with hum uh, between humanity and the law um, in every case that comes before it. Uh, we believe that Judge Pat Dugan is going to be somebody who has the experience and worldview to champion um, everybody on this court. And so, as Jill said, um, there are uh, two seats available this year. Um, we are only asking for one vote. Um, so if you'd like more information, um, you can visit uh, judgepatdugan.com and I will be around um, to take any questions and talk to y'all. So thank you so much for having us. First of all, I always have to congratulate anyone who decides to run for office, but running for judge is especially hard because they cannot talk about anything that they could possibly rule on, and they're not the most exciting races, no offense, guys, <laughs> but they affect your everyday life more than you would ever even imagine. So please, um, you know, I know, like I said, they're not the most exciting things, but make sure you're researching your judges. So on the Commonwealth Court, there are three candidates running, uh, Brandon Newman, who is out of Washington County, Matt Wolf out of Philly, I don't know, I did not meet him and I have not spoken with him. And then Brian Matthew is from Allegheny County and he can speak for himself. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Nina. Uh, my name is Brian Neff, I'm from Allegheny County and I'm running for the, the Commonwealth Court of Pennsylvania. And it's easy for me, I can say vote for the guy who showed up. There I am. But let me tell you a little bit about myself first. And, and, uh, I'm just like you, I'm a committee person. Uh, I sat on the Mount Lebanon Democratic Committee until I had to give up my seat so I could do this judicial run. Uh, and I know the hard work that you do because I've done it too. I go out and canvass for uh, candidates, I, I fundraise for candidates, I get out the vote. Um, you know, I ran uh, in the Superior Court uh, uh, primary in 2021, didn't get it, but as soon as the, the election stopped for me, I went out and helped all the statewide candidates and tried to get them to events in Allegheny County, uh, did fundraising for them, and you really tried to do everything I could to help them. And I haven't stopped. I've also been across the state, back and forth, uh, up and down, uh, to the Northeast, to the Northwest, to Philadelphia, to the Bedroom Counties, to Lehigh Valley. I've been everywhere since then, trying to meet as many people as I can at events just like this. And it's really important. Um, you know, we need to hear what everybody's talking about, what's important to you guys, and uh, we need to, you know, obviously get our name out and, and, and show that we're doing the work. And I think that the work that, that we do showing up really goes a long way to making sure that we can get ourselves elected because we're meeting the voters where they are. And that's what I've been all about. Um, even in this last election, you know, we had a lot of uh, races, uh, competitive races in Allegheny County and elsewhere in the state. I canvassed for Mandy Steele and Arvin Benkett, both are going to the House. Uh, in Harrisburg. I canvassed for Chris Deluzio, who's going to Congress down in uh, uh, Washington. And when I was back east at events, I canvassed for Susan Wild because that was a competitive seat. And I know the hard work that you're doing out here. And I, it, it's so appreciated because, you know, Cambria at one point was a blue county and it's now a red county. And we need to turn it back to a blue county. Um, and it's really critical. And you, you all help the statewide candidates by doing your best to get out the vote and bring down the margins for us. So it's truly appreciated, but I, I, I know exactly what you're doing. 
and I, and I appreciate it. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been practicing in uh, Allegheny County for 33 years. I started out as a clerk on the Superior Court for a judge by the name of Bill Sircone, and I worked for him for four years, and I drafted uh, 300 decisions for him uh, you know, all, all, on a lot of different things. And what I learned during my clerkship, one, are the essentials of judicial review, which are critical to the appellate courts, but I also learned the, the, the qualities of judicial temperament. What's important to a judge? You want a judge that comes in and is fair to everybody and asks the inquisitive questions about any particular case that's coming up. And uh, those are extremely important cases. You know, we're all here and you know, everybody comes from different backgrounds, different uh, situations in their life, and a judge has to be welcome everybody. That's the, that's the key to this. Um, and I've been in private practice for, uh, you know, after my clerkship, I've been in private practice for a number of years, and I've been working in cases that go, I've been in 30 trial courts across the Commonwealth, and I will tell you that Evansburg, Cambria County has probably been one of the larger counties that I've spent a lot of time in practicing law over the years. Um, but I've also been in front of all the appellate courts, including the court that I'm up, like, up for, the Commonwealth Court of Pennsylvania. And I've also been a leader in the Bar Association, both in Allegheny County and <coughs> statewide. Um, and I was president of the Allegheny County Bar Association in 2018. But during my 30 year uh, career with the Bar Association, I've done a lot to champion issues for women, for people of color, for the LGBTQ plus community. And I've worked really, really hard on what we call access to justice, making sure that people who can't afford legal services get the help that they need. And I do this because the Supreme Court appointed me to its board that handles this. Um, and we, we distribute funding statewide. And one of the best programs we came up with, before anybody was talking about student loan forgiveness, we had a loan repayment assistance program for attorneys that wanted to go work for uh, legal aid agencies. And the best part about this program is it's paid for by out-of-state attorneys that want to come in and practice in Pennsylvania on a case-by-case -case basis. They pay a fee, those fees get aggregated, and those fees uh, go to pay for student loans for talented attorneys that want to go work for legal aid agencies across the Commonwealth, including, I think it's Laurel Legal Services here. Um, it's a win-win. No tax dollars are involved, and these uh, fine attorneys that want to go work for legal aid get the help that they need so that they can do that work without you know, worrying about their student loans. So it's a win-win in that regard. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about the Commonwealth Court that, I, that I'm seeking election to. This is a court, as I call it, it defines the people's relationship with its government, whether it's a state government, whether it's the uh, county government, whether it's a municipal government. And they handle all sorts of different issues that may not impact you directly because you're not a litigant in the case, but are affecting you daily. So for example, this was the court that gave Trump his two wins in 2020. And one of those, if it hadn't been reversed by the Supreme Court, would have thrown out thousands of mail-in ballots for, simply because they were undated when they came in. Um, that's one thing. They also are extremely important for labor. Um, this is a court that, that uh, deals with prevailing wages for the building trades. This is also the court that deals with the Public Employees Labor Relations Act on a regular basis. It's, it's also the court that deals with unemployment compensation appeals, as well as workers' compensation appeals. So this is a court that's critically important. And I'm, as a judge, here to protect your rights, whether it's the right to vote, whether it's the right to marry whom you choose, whether it's the right to organize, whether it's the right to a livable environment. Those are all rights that are guaranteed under the Pennsylvania Constitution. And if the Dobbs decision teaches us anything, a lot of these issues are gonna be coming back to the Pennsylvania courts. They're not gonna be up at the federal level, they're gonna be here. And they're gonna to go to the Commonwealth Court and they may be the court of first resort, they may also be the court of last resort because the Supreme Court doesn't always take everything, they just can't. So it's a really critical court uh, on issues of voting rights and, and any other rights that are being determined that may affect you at the end of the day. And that's why I'm running. I'm passionate about the issues. Uh, I really hope I can earn your vote. Um, I appreciate your having me here and letting me speak for a few minutes today. Um, but you know, thank you so much for having us. Thank you to all our candidates. Um, just real quick, because I know everyone's probably hungry, I am going to ask you to stay around after you eat, because we're going to have our speakers from our county level and go over some things uh, about the future of the party. So please go up and help yourself, and let's give another round of applause to our candidates. We really need to get our candidates to win.
So Missy's going to speak on behalf of raising money for the party. Hey guys, my name is Missy. Hello. very briefly about how we raise money and so one of the things we do if you're not already doing it is the monthly act blue recurring donation so when I first became a committee person and I went to like my first meeting at the courthouse when we were allowed to meet at the courthouse Nina brought this up and said it's five dollars a month what's the big deal you pay that much for Netflix and I was kind of like oh my god this lady asked me for money and then I went ahead and did it and now I'm the treasurer, and I see what those $5 a month donations really mean to us because we couldn't have an event like this without those reoccurring donations. We couldn't do anything without those money, like the monies that we get from you guys. So on your tables, you should all have a little QR code that you can scan. There's also a little short URL you can type into your browser if that's better for you. But either way, $5 a month over the course of a year gives us, what's the math, you guys? Five times 12, 60 bucks? 60 bucks a year. It's not that much money, but we really, really need every little bit that we can get so that we can do stuff like this more often. If we get 100 people, the goal was to have 100 people signed up this year. We are at 27. So the goal is to get 100 people signed up. get us six thousand dollars raised for the year we don't want to, have to keep upping breakfast tickets and charging for events like this if you give you know netflix you forget about these subscriptions i've been doing it my husband does it missy's doing it you won't it. even know it. it we're the original four people with this and it's going to be coming to democrats people who can help move our candidates forward and get some change in the state in the federal in the national level everything Speaking of donations, you might have already done a 50-50, but Nina and I have created some fun little um, creative things up here, some with our newer logo that we've kind of been tossing around, still up for debate, but we have glasses, we have um, other things, you can order a shirt with our new logo on it, and there's a sign-up sheet up here, there's a notebook. So if you want to order a wine glass, a beer mug, a shirt, anything you want with our Cambria County Dems logo, you can do that and all of the money goes back to the party. None of that money goes in me or Nina's pockets. So it's a fun way to get something back for your donation if you're more comfortable with something like that. So anyway, I'm Misty Smith, I'm the treasurer, I want all your money, <laughs> give it to me any way you want. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to have Todd Hunter come and say Todd the whole stuff up up here and speak in a minute. But real quick, on your thank you, Shelly Shelly Lesser, who's the former Somerset chair, is leading us. She is our Southwest Caucus chair. <laughs> Speaking of chairs, our former chair Helen Whiteford is here. Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> is he still here? Our former chair Heath Palm was here. Is he still here? Or did he leave? They got fit. So, well, bye Heath, but uh, just joking. Um, just real quick, um, I'd like to introduce my Vice Chair, Nick Monar. Obviously, you just met our Treasurer, Misty Smith, our Secretary, Tony Cassander. State Committee, Diane Wachmanski. If Don couldn't be here today, he's our State Committee man. So on your tables, you're gonna see a blue sheet. You know, I like my surveys. Please fill that out so we have the correct information for you. And then you also see some white sheets about the different committee breakdowns that we would like to start. I am a big proponent of what are your skills that you want to do to help Democrats move forward? Not everybody wants to door knock. Not everybody wants to make phone calls. Trust me, as someone who's worked on campaigns for 20 years, I don't want to do them either sometimes. But what skills do you have? I recently found out I like to craft, so I started doing the cricket stuff. Missy has joined in on that. 
So if that's something you'd like to do, maybe you like to sew, maybe you like to bake. I am not a baker, trust me. But what skills would you like to do? Maybe you have design skills. So we're always looking for what you want to bring forward to the party. So please look at that over and fill out your blue sheet. So you do not need to be a committee person to be a member. Everyone here is a member of this party as long as you're registered as that. But you do not need to be a committee person to be involved with the party. And I'm actually going to have Todd come up and speak. Todd just came off of doing um, the, the All In campaign. He was the Royal Constituency Director for Pennsylvania, and he's actually a committee man here in Portage. So this is Todd, he's gonna to talk to you about the importance of that. Yeah. Woo. I expected way more applause than that, but <laughs> the problem is that too many of you know me too well, like now, that's the problem. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, I just wanted to talk to you about committee person and, and what it means to go from just being a member of the party to a committee person. Um, it's, it, I believe that, that clarity is kindness, so the minimum we expect of committee people is two days of work a year. Primary day, election day. <laughs> Show up at your polling place, pass out literature, and, and report back what we need to us. That is the bare minimum of what a committee person should be doing. Fair? I'd say in the past, yeah. Here's what you can do as a committee person. You can build the community of Democrats, not anywhere else but your hometown, your home precinct, where you live. Uh, if you are a committee person, what I'd like to do is give you a list of every single Democrat in that area. The ones you know, the ones you haven't met yet. Because Lord knows, each and every one of us, well, not each and every one of us, let me ask you this. How many of you live in an area where the Trump signs in the last, in, in 2020, outnumbered the Biden signs on your street? Oh. Right. What, what I want to do is I want to start to introduce you to everybody that lives on that street that didn't necessarily have a Biden sign because they didn't know if they could, because they didn't know they had a friend on their street. I wanted to have you meet those people, talk to those people, build that community of Democrats in your hometown, in your precinct. That's what we'd like you to do as a committee person. We ask two days of work a year. What we'd like for you to do is to build your own community, to build your, your network of friends and acquaintances where you are and help us grow the party that way, organically. Because if we want to win this year, in 2023, if we want to win 2024, 2025, any year beyond, the best way we can do that is building from the ground up. Every single pr voting precinct, let's get a committee person or two in them so that they can start to build that community and gain Democratic friends so that we don't have to worry about how many Trump signs or DeSantis signs are on their, on your street, because Lord knows we don't want that either. Um, anybody that knows me knows I don't sleep and I don't shut up, so if you do know me uh, and you've got my information, just reach out to me. If you don't, it's Todd Hunter or Todd Holsoffel on Facebook, just find me. You can't miss me, for God's sakes. Uh, and and uh, other than that, you can always get in touch with Nina. She will get you in touch with me. I put it to people this way. I'll do anything to help grow the party. And now that I don't have to worry about the whole state, all I have to worry about is Cambria County. It's a lot easier to drop. Thank you. So you're actually going to hear from our county um, election officers here in a few minutes. Uh, our row officer uh, contest. But before that, I just want to speak to a few things, okay? First of all, uh, Brian Neff references before. We were a blue county. We were a blue county for a long time. And a lot of people have to say, oh, the Democratic Party left me. Well, that's funny, because I'm a Democrat, and they haven't left me. People, re they relied on Mirtha and they relied on his good graces of yeah. money and on his power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now we're underwater, and I admit that. But now is the time we build back up, but it's gonna take everybody in this room. And 
I'm going to say we're hurt. We're hurt that we have had people switch parties. We are hurt that people who ran as Democrats switched to the opposite party. And I'm not going to sit here and badmouth Republicans on the local level because it's a little different than on the national level. But I do take it personally. And I'll tell you this much. I said something to two of them at my parents' viewing. Okay? So I'm not afraid to say something about that. Um, but... In that regard, we do have an issue, which I'm just gonna be blunt about right now. We have two county judge races that are open. There are, I believe at this point, six, seven people running. Five? Are we not? Brett, how many people are running? Brett? Five. Five. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I'm gonna be blunt. Everyone has switched the registration to Republican. Every single candidate also has to cross file. But because they are registered as Republican, and I just want people to understand this, they cannot speak at this event. So if there's nothing against them, I'm friends with some of these people, personal friends with some of these people, a lot of people in this room have known a lot of these people a long time. We will still need to vote for <coughs> two judge candidates. So your choice is yours on that, because we will not be making an endorsement in that. But I just wanted to let you know, so the people that are here today that are running for those offices are Brett Smith. My case is anything that's Paul's blinding this moment. Michael Carbonara, is he still here? I, there he is, okay. I can't see right now. Tim Sloan, Tim's still here? Did he leave? Anyone? Okay. Tim? And Forrest Fordham? I think he left. I, w I can see him because he's like, what, 6'8? <laughs> and then what, Tony? Somebody tell me this girl's name again. Tony Chippy Cargo. Because they kept pronouncing her name wrong on the news the other night, if you saw that. Pardon me? Tony Marie Cargo. Tony Marie Cargo. Okay. <laughs> like I said, they kept mispronouncing her name the other night. So, best of luck to them. We will be having a discussion after the May primary on where we go with those things, okay? So, this is a municipal election year. Municipal elections are very important. Very, very important. Um, as we know, the mask mandates and school boards, CRT, which isn't even taught in school. On college, as an elective. Where? College. College. Yeah, college. And we have how many lawyers are in this room? Because <laughs> that's where it's usually taught at is law school theory course. And trust me, if you ever had to take a theory course, they're not teaching that in high school, okay? Or grade school or anything else. But these are social issues that have been on the national side are filtering down into our local election. All politics is now national. It's not all local anymore, like Tip O'Neill famously said. It's now nationalized, which is why you have people switching. As someone who is born and raised Catholic, daughter of a steel worker, all my brothers are union, I am proud to be a Democrat. Yep. I am very proud to be a Democrat, and I hope the people in this room are proud to be Democrats. I am a Democrat because of my upbringing. I know people are afraid to run as a Democrat, but you gotta start saying, I'm a proud Democrat. I stand up for the working men and women every day. Yep. I will stand up, my husband's a teacher, and you have people like Ron DeSantis wanting to ban math books over CRT, come on, come on. They put it out on a word problem? I don't think so. Cutting funding for teachers, because you'll never hear a teacher say they have too much funding, all right? In is it Iowa, Idaho? They're trying to get rid of all taxes, yep. which is then be a national sales tax, which would be a regressive tax on poor people and the middle class. <laughs> so these are just some of the things that we have going on that as we talk, you know, I'm sure we've all said this in private, boogeyman politics, stuff to scare you about. CRT, trans rights. Not, I don't want to say trans rights, that you're that some boy in school is changing his, his gender so he can compete in women's field hockey. Because that's why someone does it. I don't think so, okay? These are very, very important issues that are being made fun of 
personally, like I personally believe by the right. You take advantage of There are people who have questions and that's understandable. Ask them, ask them, but don't be judgment on it. I'm just going off on a tangent there. Anyways, while we're here, I do want to have all of our committee people stand up. Our committee people, please stand up. Judy. We need more of them. We need more of them. Thank you every day for what you guys do. Can we please have our members of labor stand up? We go hand in hand and we will always fight for our brothers and sisters. Always in solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please have Ed, Tom, and, and BJ come up? Ed, Tom, and BJ. Ed, Tom, and BJ? <laughs> While they're walking up, I'm, I'm just actually going to face this like right on. Um, I don't know how many people here know this. My parents recently passed away on the same day in October, which is why I was on at the breakfast. And I'd like to thank the executive committee for everything they did to have that go forward. Um, my dad and Ed have been <laughs> friends for ever. So um, I actually kind of want to discuss with you. Do you guys want to speak together as individuals or as one or? Let the big guys go first. Let the, let the big guys go first. That's the guy who's like 6'5 over here says that. So, once again, municipal elections are important. We need people to run for school board, for borough council, township supervisor, constables. Everything local is pretty much up, okay? If you're interested, please see me or Todd back there. If you want to donate, see me or Misty or anybody. We'll take your money, trust me. <laughs> But our road officers are very, very important in your everyday life. They're gonna affect you every day more than President Biden is. And we need to go out and vote and be as enthusiastic as these races as we are for the presidential election. So without further ado, who would like to speak first? I'll go first, I'm not as windy as these two guys. <laughs> Here's BJ <PJ> Smith. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Um, I'll try to be short here. I'm gonna to try to take you back in time a little bit for seven years ago. Um, whenever we, in, I, I first got elected, when I first got elected, uh, I, was the, I was the guy that sat down in the chair and Mr. Sarnik and Mr. Trinisi said, you have to reopen the budget. I said, I wasn't here. They said, we're nine and a half million dollars in debt. I said, I still wasn't here. Uh, I said, is there any, any other surprises? We have 10 structurally deficient bridges that will have to come out of general fund, probably the tune of eight or nine million dollars. So we did some calculating. We come up with a couple different acts. The five dollars on your car paid for every one of those bridges, nine million dollars. That last bridge will be done this year. We we also took the for the uh, the standard pours rated us a B minus it. B minus, we are now A, so that means junk bonds are investment bonds now. We took care of all the infrastructure in the county. Now one of the things I'm proud this year, and Nick might be able to contest to this, we had a big problem with the children and youth, yeah, as you all know, that, oh, yeah. and with the yep. unions. I'm a 25 year coal miner. I, it, it broke my heart. So what we could do though, we talked to Ed and, and myself and Tom and Mike, and what we did is we, we were two and a half years into a five-year contract. We couldn't do anything at that time, so we took it on the chin until we got closer to budget time and knew what we would have the money to do what we needed to do. At that time, we took the children and youth up to a $5 an hour raise. We gave them college tuition, and now the starting wage in the courthouse is no less than $12 an hour. So, thank you. I want to thank everybody for their patience. So thank you very much. Exactly. I you guys are For those who don't know, BJ was also a township supervisor back in the day. See? 
Uh, our next our next official is Tom Trudisky. I'm sure everyone in here knows him. Tom is everywhere and never stops down. And just so you know, Tom has always been like that. When he was jury commissioner back in the day, he would be anywhere we ever asked him to be. So, I mean, I'm talking an office opening. Uh, we might have a phone bank that we wanted people at. Tom would be there. So, just want to let you know, he's always been running around like a crazy man. But he's not crazy. So, without further ado. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. I said it all. But uh, seriously, thank you for gathering here today. Thank you for Nina and your team for putting this uh, meet and greet on. Uh, my teammate B.J. Smith and his son Brett's in the audience, and Joan, the first lady of Cambria County, couldn't be here today with her son Christopher at home. And we've been a total team effort. And you know we have to deal with controller Cerny every freaking day, and that's not easy. How about it, B.J.? And Rosie has to deal with them every day too. Rosie Cerny, Sarah, thank you, Rosie, for dealing with that. On a serious note, where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. Uh, we came in office together almost $10 million in the hole. Uh, we go from junk bond status, be the first county in the state of Pennsylvania to go bankrupt. 67 counties doing things 67 different ways. And we're going to be the first one to go bankrupt. Because of working with other elected officials, employees, the courts, and everybody together doing a lot of teamwork. We go from junk bond status to investment grace status. We go from being almost $10 million in a hole having debt, we can't pay our bills. Uh, we have to, uh, in the old days, past practices to borrow money, to borrow money just to pay back loans. Those past practices <clears throat> went away. We realistically did our budget. We just didn't overestimate the fake balance of the budget. That's how we, you get where you get. At one time, the county was borrowing $10 million tax anticipation loan just to pay the bills. Payroll is $1.2 million every two weeks. It's a little bit higher now, but we were trying to hit payroll and we weren't paying our bills on time. So we're paying over $100,000 in late fees. And that made times in the last four years, probably in the last seven or eight years, we paid in late fees and made much zero dollars. We just pay over 100,000 a year. <laughs> we go from borrowing $10 million down to $7 million. You know how much we borrowed first time? We, we, we can remember since 19, or, uh, 19, I can't remember. In the 70s, we borrowed $10 million, and then a couple years ago, we borrowed $6 million, tax participation loan. Guess how much we borrowed this year? Zero. 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 <laughs> BJ and I and Mark Wissinger, our administration, we came in together. We didn't have all the answers, but guess what? We worked a lot of department heads, a lot of people working together. BJ talked about... Uh, we inherited 10 structurally deficient bridges. So Cambria County owns 26 bridges. I don't know if you know that or not. 10 of them are structurally deficient. One is um, not, in, not not even open. At the Red Mill Bridge, which goes out for bid this year. And we also, we have a comprehensive plan, a award winning comprehensive plan. A lot of times, counties have a good comprehensive plan once every 10 years, and it sits on a shelf. We have followed our comprehensive plan and knocked about five or six things off of that and added to it. So our structurally deficient bridges, the 10 of them, guess how many are structurally deficient right now? Zero. And the one bridge that's been closed, the Red Mill Bridge, is about 60 yards from the Ghost Town Trail CNI mm -hmm. extension. That goes out the, the bid this year. Again, Trinisky, Smith, and Wissinger didn't have all the answers to that administration, but working together. And also, anybody familiar with Bittendale? Anybody use the Ghost Town Trail? Mm -hmm. There's a bony pile as you get into Bittendale. It's very exciting. That bony pile is probably 40% gone now. And those three sisters have come out of the water. It was the three commissioners and Bama working together that down the road, Indiana County, you're welcome. You're going to have some clean water going down there and people fishing and, and so forth. That's good for our economy. But because of people working together, we're taking care of county government. We're also thinking outside the box and trying to create an economy of outdoor recreation, which is the front door of economic development, creating a, uh, uh, an economy at the airport. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows this, but it's starting our administration. Mm -hmm. But St. Francis University, there'll be some more announcements coming up. It's going to have an 18-month program that's going to have people working on engines. So when you're done, you can work on a jet engine. Oh, by the way, this is happening in Cambria County, and you're going to St. Francis University. It's because a lot of collaboration and things getting done. So back where we came from, where we're at and where we're going, every day is a budget day. Every day we think, think things seriously. We measure our day off, and we're out of the office, not in the office. BJ and I... We're a great team. We're out in the community. We hear what's going on. Sometimes we can't always tell you the answers you want to hear, but we take that back. 
and we make votes, and we think about things, we take that into consideration. So we go from $10.5 million in the hole, junk bond status, going bankrupt, and then we got our act in order. We told Standard & Poor's, when you talk, any accountants in the room, you kind of like, come, you know, you're not too excited. You tell us what we have to do, everything's pretty much black and white. There's no gray with you guys. We said we're gonna do the right thing with the budget, we're not gonna over overestimate revenue. And we did that, and we followed the course. We talked to Standard & Poor's a year later, so we go from a B minus, poor vision, poor outlook, to the following year, to a B minus, positive outlook. And I'm almost done, but this is exciting. So we do that, and in this past February, we go from no credit at all, junk bond status, this past February, Standard & Poor's calls us. And guess what we got, as you, Commissioner Smith alluded to, we got an A rating, positive outlook. So we go from junk bond status, no credit, no bank one to talk to us, to superior credit. And that didn't happen overnight. That started with Trinisky Smith and this administration. We want to keep that momentum going. We want to keep that momentum going, going and we think we can, and we're, we're also proud to be Democrats. We didn't switch, we didn't flip flop, we know how we got here. Every day we work for everybody. We work for Republicans, Democrats, Independents, everybody, every day. From people we put on boards and authorities, we put the right people on boards and authorities. Dan West Muskie is on a board and authority of the Planning Commission, award winning Planning Commission. And you think <laughs> countywide, even though Diane's from the northern part of the county. But it's everybody working together. We're proud to be Democrats. We get things done. We're blue collar workers in the white collar world, and we get things done. We thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know what they uh, saved me for last uh, for cleanup, or the, they hope everybody's sleeping by now. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank uh, <clears throat> past chair lady uh, Helen Whiteford for her leadership over the years when we, we were struggling. and Nick for taking the reins of the party uh, and setting on a course that uh, we may not be back yet, but we're going to be back. Now, let me just tell you a few things about Cambry County. You folks are all, awful fortunate to have two commissioner leaders like you have. I work with them. I don't always agree with them, and they'll tell you that. But guess what? The three of us sit down around the table and we collaborate for what's best for the taxpayers of Cambry County. Last eight, eight years, two terms that they, they've been there, lowered taxes four out of the five last years, okay? That saves people money of, so, because everything else has gone up. As Tom said, we went from junk bond status. Listen, when, when the last administration was in before we, before we got, got the commissioners here in, they borrowed $11 million on next year's taxes because they couldn't make the payrolls at the end of the year. We were damn near bankrupt, damn near bankrupt. We've straightened that around. We have cash, we have cash in the bank. And we recognize that, that's why we give tax breaks back and the real estate tax. That's right. Not only that, the CARES money, you know, and the American Rescue money that we got from the federal government. You know, everybody talks about Democrats not doing the right things. Well, listen, without that rescue money, this country has been in a hell of a lot more bad shape than what it is. But they talk about in Somerset County, and I know Shelley was here, they talk about how they invested their money, you know, and they fought over it for how many months and they, before they invested. Well, guess what? In Camry County, we invested our money the day after we got it. <laughs> we make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on interest. We also implemented a program for uh, how we uh, use that money. The commissioners have assigned projects, we don't just send a check out in the whole amount. We wait until they get the job done, they send us an invoice, and then we send them the money. Guess what happens? When you have 20, 20 or $25 million sitting in a bank, it doesn't take long to add up money. Especially, for, I think we're a little over 4% interest now. So we're doing the things right. We've right-sized the government. We've, we've eliminated uh, jobs that, that uh, may not have been needed. We've streamlined government. We put new, uh, we're putting a new accounting system in right now. These things are not cheap. New roof on the war memorial, new roof on the prison, new heating system in the prison. The courthouse is getting new windows and new boilers in. How, how many windows? Who, who can come close? How many windows do we have in the courthouse? How many? Pretty close. About 332. 332 windows were replacing. Guess how much that costs? $3 million. $3 million. 
Guess what? We didn't take out a loan. We had the money for it. When the new election machines were, we had to get new election machines a couple of years ago, $1.5 million. Guess where that money came from? We didn't have to get a loan. We had the money put back. We're doing the right things for you folks, for you. Sometimes we take a lot of heat. Sometimes we take some criticism, the commissioners and myself. But at the end of the day, we're doing the right thing for the people of Cambria County. So the future of Cambria County is stable. We are turning the corner, just like this Democratic Party is today. We're turning the corner. And at the end of the, and at the, end of the day, we're going to be victorious on both ends. All we need is your support to get out and help us help the three Democrats that remain. <laughs> yesterday, we're Democrats today, and we'll be Democrats tomorrow. Not these people who are looking for where the majority of the votes are and where the majority of the registrations are. You know, and I've seen this happen in the past. We had a commissioner in the past who was a president commissioner. He was a Republican, changed to Democrats. Why? So he could get the votes. After he retired and got his health care and his uh, pension from the, from the county, guess what? He turned back to Republican. Where the hell does he think he made his living from? Where the hell does he think he's getting his health care from? We've, we've taken care of the employees with wages, with benefits, and we have a solid pension program. That was promised to them years ago, and we are living up to those commitments. And we'll continue to do that. And we'll always keep the taxpayer and the residents of Cambria County in mind. Thank you for your past support. We all appreciate your support this year because, uh, quite honestly, they're going to be gunning for us. And we're up to the task, though. We're ready to take them all on. I might got a little, I might have a little smile in the mouth, but I'm still going to fire him together. Thank you. We want to thank, when they start talking about the roof on the war oil and the prison on our infrastructure, because of Ed Surik and his leadership and what we do in our executive sessions, we sit around the room, we brainstorm, and he started talking about the infrastructure. And, you know, we know Ed's humble, right? That's how, but seriously though, myself and BJ and Ed and other folks in the room, we go around. We took, we're taking care of our infrastructure and we reduced taxes four of the last seven years. That's $4.8 million is going back into Cambria County. That didn't happen overnight. It's because of Controller Cernic, Commissioner BJ Smith, and Commissioner Mark Wissinger was a good person to work with. We laid the foundation with the other elected officials the courts and everybody working together. So Ed, seriously, thank you for being there for us and having those healthy arguments. Thank you, Ed, sir. I'm a lot shorter than they are, and I have wheels on today. Let's give our royal officers another round of applause. Thank you for everything you do. What a great example of good governance and caring about the government, not getting in an office and just taking advantage of it. So, is Etta all right still here? I see her hand. So Etta's in the back, and Joel Soberman is here. Please, um, after our last, or I'm gonna speak for a few minutes, and then we're gonna have Danny come up and speak, and we'll be the last two speakers. Please uh, meet up with them. Joel is working on a project that we're trying to get the, the National Democratic